Good morning and welcome to this, our 57th year of services at the lake. We're glad all of you are here. We are trying to practice social distancing, so if you're not comfortable where you are, there's plenty of seating along the pads. There's seating along the pads here, so if you feel like you need to move, feel free to move around and get comfortable. We want everybody to be happy to be here. Um, we're not having refreshments uh, as a part of this problem, but they will, they will resume as, as uh, we feel it's safe. Uh, there is some water if uh, any of you get thirsty, it's in the coolers up there. We uh, had a few printed bulletins. If you did not get one and want to follow along with the words to the hymns and whatnot, you can go to stjohnaugusta.org on your smartphone slash virtual services and you will find the uh, program for what we're doing here this morning. Uh, we've heard two musical offerings already. Pam Bussey, who has been playing piano here since she was a little girl for these services, uh, and she's back again this year. We're glad to have Pam. Our uh, trumpet player is Sam Spearing. Thank you for that offering. Uh, he'll be uh, joining us some more. We also have some other folks participating. Uh, Sawyer is leading the singing our associate pastor, Lindsay Solomon, will be uh, bringing us the call to worship and a psalm. Uh, our members, Jeff and Roy, will be giving us some uh, offerings of scripture. And our speaker this morning is our, our own minister at St. John, Dr. Jody Alderman. Uh, so I, I hope you all have a good service this morning. So let us now prepare our hearts and our minds for the worship of Almighty God. Good morning. Great to see you all today in this beautiful creation, today here in God's house. Sometimes we can't put into words the splendor and the majesty of God. And so Psalm 8 does that for us. So I invite you to look up into the sky or look at the trees or the water or look around you at all the people that you haven't seen in ages and think about the greatness of God as we have our call to worship with Psalm 8. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory in the heavens through the praise of children and infants. You have established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of them, human beings that you care for them? You have made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honor. You made them rulers over the works of your hands and put everything under their feet, all flocks and herds and the animals of the wild, the birds in the sky and the fish in the sea, and all that swim the paths of the seas. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth.
When I lift my hand, I need you, particularly children, to say, and God saw it was good. Let's practice that. And God saw it was good. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness covered the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters, and then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. light. And, and God, God saw that it was, was good. good. And God separated the light from the darkness, and God called the light day. And the darkness God called night. And there was evening and morning the first day. And God said, Let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. And God made the dome and separated the waters from above the dome from the waters below the dome. And it was so. And God called the dome sky. And there was evening and morning the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth. And the waters were gathered together, and he called them seas. And God saw that it was good. And then God said, Let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. And the earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seeds of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with seeds in it. And God saw that it was good. And then God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two greater lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser to rule the night. And God made the stars. And God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there were evening and morning of the fourth day, and God said, Let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. And so God created great sea monsters, and every living creature that moves of every kind, which, with which the waters swarm, and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful, and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let the birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and morning the fifth day, and then God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things, and wild things of the earth of every kind. And it was so, and God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, and the cattle of everything and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. And then God said, Let us make humankind upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed and its fruit. You shall have food for them. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, and everything that has breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. And God saw everything God had made. And indeed, God saw that it was good. And it was evening and morning of the sixth day. And thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and they were multiplied. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all the work. And then God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because God had rested from making all of creation. These are the generations of heaven and earth when they were created. Indeed, this is the day that the Lord has made, and God, God saw, saw 
that it was good. Let us pray. <clears throat> oh God, we are mindful of the gift of creation, the gift of life itself. Help us as we receive your blessings to share your blessings with others. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. <laughs> I'll be reading a few verses out of the Gospel of John, uh, Matthew, the 28th chapter, uh, starting at verse 16, but I want to go back and read a, couple, a verse or two right before this. Um, hear now the word of the Lord. Now the angel said, Now go quickly and tell his disciples, He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, just before we pray, I want to just say these are, uh, are different kind of experiences, I guess. We've all had these experiences uh, with regard to the pandemic, and uh, we recognize that um, this service is a little bit different, and, and one of the reasons is we decided now at St. John Church, we 
always use the lectionary. The lectionary is a set of scriptures designated for every Sunday uh, for all eternity. <laughs> but these passages have a theme in them. Uh, sometimes the theme is a little bit harder to find than others, but this theme, uh, it works for us. But we decided that for this service, since it would be, uh, uh, since St. John has not started uh, its regular services, we've been live streaming, but we're not having a congregation come together. We thought this would be a little special uh, experience for us. So we're actually recording this service, uh, uh, and uh, we're going to be, I guess, uh, putting it on our website at 11 o'clock so that folks that uh, weren't able to to uh, be here today are able to worship with us. But think about this. This service has been going on for 57 years, and I doubt that it's ever been... Uh, streamed or recorded and put out on the, the interweb, as I like to say. But that's kind of cool, you know. So we're breaking history here, folks. That's making history, and that's a, that's a good thing. I, uh, I'd like for us to now just center ourselves and in light of all that's going on in the world today, go to God in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, we don't know how to pray when we're so distracted, and so broken. We have not heard the cry of the needy and we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. Help us to look honestly at ourselves and see the hurting world around us. Awaken us to the pain of others, those who are oppressed, put down, bullied, beaten, and murdered. Open our eyes to see, open our ears to hear, open our hearts to love. Forgive us for the sin of white supremacy and our slowness to respond to the racism in our own lives and in the world. Help us as white Americans to recommit to work to racial to work for racial justice, to invest time and effort to listen and to learn and to listen even more. Help us to work against evil and hate and intolerance, to realize that our silence and our indifference has added to the violence. Help us to know when to speak and when to listen. Wake us up to the world around us to become participants in bringing equality and reconciliation. Help us to be instruments of peace and nonviolence. Today, we grieve for all families who have lost loved ones due to the pandemic. We grieve for those who are filled with hate and ignorance. We grieve for all those who have lost loved ones due to racial violence. We grieve for those exposed to tear gas and rubber bullets. And we grieve for those ordered to use weapons of violence against others. We grieve for a broken world, a world in need of healing. Help us to build bridges and to see the wonder and the importance of diversity. We confess that we have spent most of our lives avoiding pain, and yet we pray that we would move through the pain in order for it to teach us lessons of love, of justice, and of mercy. Give us courage perseverance during these disturbing times and give us hope for a better tomorrow. Give all our leaders wisdom and understanding. Comfort the afflicted and help us to move forward in the days ahead knowing that you care for all your children. Help us to put our trust in you 
And when we don't know what to do, help us to keep our eyes on you. Holy Lord, hear our prayer. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. There were 12 years old who on a Saturday had decided to go down to the high school and there was a track and they just decided to do what brothers do. They kind of were competitive and they said, well, let's race around the track. So they drew a line on the track and they were going to run a lap around and sure enough, you know, you imagine the 15-year-old beat his brother and as soon as he got through, he said, I told you I'd beat you. But the, you got to like what the little brother said. You liked, that, you liked his attitude. He said, yeah, but I was catching up with you the whole time. I don't know about you folks, but I have this feeling in my own life that I feel like I'm trying to catch up. Catch up with what's going on in the world. Catch up with study. Catch up with work. Have you ever, just feel like you're behind? You know, I... Uh, I uh, always said that I started uh, kindergarten. I didn't have kindergarten. Uh, uh, I started first grade when I was five years old, and I feel like I've been catching up ever since. You know how that feeling goes. Well, today we're going to be talking about this, and the scripture from Matthew said that the angel said, go to Jerusalem for Jesus has already gone before you. Now let's drop back and just pick up on that Genesis passage in creation you know I as I was listening to that again I, I thought you know there's a couple of things important in there one of the things there's only one commandment we ever really got right and that was the one go forth and multiply all the rest of them we screwed up but uh, y'all can cut back on the go forth and multiply one. <laughs> we already did that right but uh, that first verse in the beginning I read recently that actually a better translation it for in the beginning is as God was creating. You see, God didn't just create and then go to some far off place and stop creating. You know, these trees around here, several hundred years old, I imagine, and the needles fall to the ground and more trees grow. This creative nature of God continues. It didn't stop. God is a God who is always creating, who is going out before us. Our God is a God who is on the move. God created light, but the sun comes up every day. The galaxies are still expanding. So, this God of ours is a God who is active, who is on the move, who is not only with us, who is not only behind us, above us, underneath us, but is the same God who has gone out before us. And I like to think of that as God is pulling us forward. You see, God is about doing. God is running ahead of us and sometimes God out, well, God always outruns us. But sometimes we have to catch up, it feels like. Now, I know that I've probably told you this before. I was born at a very young age. Some of y'all get that explained to you later, okay? If you can't get that, all right. It's good to remember that we did not create ourselves but that God created us. And in Romans, Paul says, we do not live to ourselves. In other words, we were created and we are to be good stewards of this thing we call life. We are reminded that we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. In other words, we are to be good stewards of not only creation, but also of ourselves. Our lives and this world are not to be used just willy-nilly. We're to be good stewards of creation. Listen, taking care of the planet and of each other is not political. It's biblical. 
that, that was kind of powerful. <laughs> you know, we've been, isn't that crazy? Let me say that again. I won't shout it this time. Taking care of the planet and each other is not political. It's biblical. The first thing God said to Adam was tend the earth. And throughout the Bible, the overarching theme is what? Love one another. Creation isn't finished. It's continuing. And creation is a work in progress. And so are you. So am I. That gives my wife hope. I don't think this microphone's working. Yeah. It, you know, my wife is hopeful that I'm getting better. I, uh, my brother always used to say, he kind of tricked me about this. He would say, you know, Jody, I, I just can't wait till tomorrow. And I said, well, why is that, Woody? He said, but, well, because I'm getting better looking every day. God did not create us like a painter paints a picture and hangs it on a wall. No, God is creating us almost like a composer creates a great sonata. And it's not finished. You're not finished. None of us are finished. God's still working on us, as the song goes. This, uh, this pandemic has caused us to have an unusual year. Um, it was an unusual school year. Uh, it was an unusual uh, graduation for many people. Uh, I don't know about you, but it was a pretty unusual Easter for me, probably for you. And you know that we had Mother's Day in there. We kind of, you know, it was just all unusual. This lake property has given us an opportunity to worship because we can spread out and be safe. And so we thank God that we can worship together and still kind of be separated. We can still practice some social distancing and be together. Now, this is kind of unusual. I know we've got a lot of folks from St. John Church in Augusta today, but I'd like to know for just a moment, where else are y'all from? I mean, what other churches are here today? First Baptist. Which one? First Baptist. First Baptist. Baptist. Augusta. Praise the Lord. Glad you're here. Modoc Baptist. Modoc, glad you're here. Pittsburgh, Pete. Well, praise the Lord. Glad you're here. St. Mark. Mark. Which one? Trinity on the Hill. Trinity on the Hill. Praise the Lord. Glad you folks are here. I guess you folks back there, we all, always talk about back row Baptists in the Methodist church. So I guess y'all are back row Baptists back there. <laughs> it doesn't matter if you're from a church or not, but we're just glad that you're here. But I think it's good to look around and and see friends that, I don't know about you, but I've not seen some of these folks. Uh, maybe for a, for a year for some of you, because some of you come to this every year. But also, we haven't seen our, our good friends, and so it's good. Y'all just look around at everybody and wave like, silly like, okay? <laughs> I want to see who's not waving. That, that must be somebody from another church. <laughs> We're glad that you're here. You know, when we look back on 2020... Hopefully, maybe a few years from now, hopefully we will see it as a wake-up call for us, not just due to the pandemic, but also due to the realization of the injustice of black people in America, something that's been taking place for hundreds of years. And this has been a most difficult week for America on many different levels. These are painful days. Pain can be an effective teacher. I don't know about you, but I know I've had a wide range of emotions from, from grief to anger to sadness to outrage to fear. If, however, we refuse to grow, if we refuse to move forward, to examine ourselves, to listen, to learn, to try to be different, to try to do new things, if we don't do that, we fail again. To refuse to change is to refuse to be a part of the creative process of God. 
To refuse to change is to deny that God is still creating. It is a refusal to recognize that God has gone on ahead of us into Galilee. You know, as Christians, we have a theology of creation. We start asking questions like, what's going on in the world? Or what is God up to? And where can I join in on what God is doing? The God who said, let there be light, is the same God who continues to give us light. The same God who continues to bring something out of the watery chaos continues to bring life out of death. Have you not known, have you not seen that God is doing a new thing? Do you not perceive it? We were made to be co-creators with God. And when we create, we move closer to God. When we consume, we move away from God. We were made to create. We were made to express ourselves. I've uh, been reading a little book called Think Like a Five-Year-Old. Reclaim Your Wonder and Create Great Things. Now, Paul Torrance didn't write the book, but he's quoted in the book as saying this, and this is a little lengthy quote, but put on your thinking caps here. He's talking about creativity, and he says, Creativity is a process of becoming sensitive to problems, deficiencies, gaps in knowledge, missing elements, disharmonies, and so on. Identifying the difficulties, searching for solutions, making guesses, testing and retesting these hypotheses, and finally communicating the results. I know that's a lot, so I'm going to read it to you again. Creativity is a process, and I think that, that God is in all of this. Creativity is a process of becoming sensitive to the problems and the deficiencies and the gaps in knowledge, the missing elements, the disharmonies, and identifying those, the difficulties, and to search for solutions and making guesses, testing and retesting those hypotheses, and finally communicating the results. Lynn Wilson, the author of the book, says he likes his five-year-old definition better. His five-year-old says Creati creativity is when you have fun and you make stuff. Well, maybe there's some truth to that. Just a little note, a side note is that in this book, uh, part of what this, uh, this fellow says, Lynn, Lynn Wilson, is when we're five-year-old, you ask a five-year-old, can you dance? Sure, I can dance. Can you sing? Sure, I can sing. Can you write a song? Sure, I can write a song. Can you paint a picture of God? Sure, I can. You know, a five-year-old is creative. But along the lines, about nine-year-olds, we start governing our own creativity for whatever reason. And we, for many of us, we stop being as creative. That's why kids are just so creative. There's something about being creative that is what, is, that is what God is about. You see, creativity is about having ideas having value and solving problems. Creativity is life. Now, we were made to be creative. That might be paint a picture. That might be start a business. That might be doing a service. It might be writing an article, teaching a Sunday school class, or going for a walk, or thinking a thought. In light of the pandemic, violence towards black people and riots in the streets, we are brokenhearted, brokenhearted that lives have been lost. But don't we also recognize that God is using this painful time, this painful crisis to bring about positive change? Yes, I see it. Do you not see it? I've been watching the television and seeing some of the protests. Yes, I'm brokenhearted by the, le by the looters and by some of that that's taking place. But the predominant mixture of those folks that are protesting are young people, white and black, standing together saying enough is enough. There are many good things that will come out of all of this, out of all of our pain. God, you see, 
can make good out of evil. God makes good out of chaos. And I think we can say that these are chaotic times, but it is, it is out of the chaos that God does some of God's most creative work. You see, God is not finished with me. God is not finished with you. God is not finished with us. God's creation is ongoing. Thanks be to God. Bill Floyd was a United Methodist preacher who was uh, at Athens first for a long time, and it was at Northside Church in Atlanta for years. And he had a lot of kind of cute little go-to sayings. Some, one of his quotes uh, for a certain situation, say, for example, somebody came up to him, and uh, whether it be a staff member or a lay person come up to him, they'd be in a panic, and they'd say something like, Oh, Pastor we don't have enough Easter eggs for the Easter egg hunt. <laughs> That's the kind of stuff we have to deal with sometimes. <laughs> and he would say, it will be chaos and it will be wonderful. <laughs> you know, it will be chaos and it will be wonderful. You know, I don't, I don't get all tied up in, in folks that have to say that creation took six days. I don't care if it took six days or 600 gazillion years. I don't think that the whole book of Genesis is not about how. It's not a science book. It's about who. It's about God. God created. Bottom line, God created. I don't have to worry about how it happened. I just know it happened. And I know that God is the great creator. And I can find in creation this God who is mysterious and marvelous and wonderful and praiseworthy. I don't think the book is about how. It's about God and what God is like. You see, God is, is always out before us, in front of us, pulling us forward. Today we're reminded that God is always on the move. Jesus, you see, is always on the move. And the church is having to make some creative adjustments to catch up because we've been behind. And maybe it's time to do a new thing after all because God has never stopped creating. We will have to continue to try new things. We will need to try new ways to worship new ways to serve, new ways to share the gospel, new ways to listen to people and to listen to God. We'll have to have new ways to speak, new ways to act, and new ways to love. New ways to love. God is always moving. God is always acting. And our Christian faith should be like that, never fixed, never finished. Our thinking changes. Our, our faith deepens and gets reformed and formed again. Jesus is on this journey with us. And at times, he's way ahead of us and we have some catching up to do. I confess that lately, I feel like I've been running behind. But I'm catching up, Lord! I'm catching up. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, the God of all creation, the God of all people, you love all of us. And even in the midst of our brokenness, we know that you love us. And we know that you're continuing to create life. You continue to change us. Help us to be moldable. Help us to be willing to hear the hurts of others that we've been slow to hear before. Help us to move in new ways, to build bridges, to love people, to listen, to learn, to grow. Bring healing to our nation. Bring healing to the brokenness of our own lives. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Oreos today. I know that's why some of you came, and uh, maybe in a few weeks we'll have Oreos. We do have water up on the shore up here if you'd like a bottle of water. Um, you don't have to just rush off. We can still kind of holler at each other or say, speak to folks around you. I know we're still practicing social distancing, and we want to hear the, the trumpet at the bend. But here, receive now this, this benediction. As you go from this place, wherever you go, I hope that you'll be mindful of the world around you. I hope you'll be mindful of creation and give God praise and thanksgiving. For God is a God of gifts. And he made creation so that we could enjoy it. So I'm glad that you're here worshiping God and enjoying the lake, this beautiful place. But also God is working in our lives to bring change. And I hope that you will open your heart again a little wider today that you might be a part of what God is doing to bring change in a world that needs it. Now go from this place and know that God is with you. God goes with you. God goes before you. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, go in peace. Amen. Amen.